Hello and welcome to Living Life. May you be enriched in your time in God's Word today. Today is January 29th, and we are on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I have three kids uh, in my family, and all of the three kids are diversely different. Uh, one has a very outgoing personality. She wants to stand up on the stage and be seen by people. She loves fruits. The other one is very introverted. He loves looking at telescopes and loves reading books, and he loves free, uh, fried food. Uh, the other one is very outgoing. Uh, she loves interacting with people. She loves Korean food. Everyone is uh, uniquely different. And uh, when we talk about church in 1 Corinthians, Paul's mentioning that you know, he doesn't make us clones like Star Wars stormtroopers. Uh, he doesn't make us exactly same as each other, but he makes us unique and uh, distributes variety of, of diverse gifts to his people. So uh, where do you stand in the kingdom and the church of God? And how do you play your part? How do you contribute uh, to the church? Let's look into our text today together. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you are pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. In our text today, uh, we see Paul affirming the church that they have the Holy Spirit living in them. If they're able to confess that Jesus is Lord uh, by, by their heart, that means the Holy Spirit is with uh, these people, with our church. And also, uh, because the Holy Spirit is with them, they're given the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well. And there's this beautiful unity and diversity in the church community. A unity in the sense that the same Holy Spirit uh, really brings them together and distributes these gifts. And diversity in the sense that nobody has the same gifts uh, they're given diverse gifts according to the will of the Holy Spirit. Look down at verse 7. Uh, it highlights the purpose of these spiritual gifts. Verse 7 says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So the answer to what is the purpose of these spiritual gifts is not for our own good or personal individual benefit, but it's the benefit of the whole church community, the common good. And each member exercising their gifts and really serving one another by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, you experience the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit really manifests Himself, uh, which means that you can experience the Holy Spirit uh, through the gifts, the acts of service by other people in the community. So when someone uh, speaks to me uh, the Word of God, uh, so I, I experience the Word of God coming to me through another person. Uh, really the presence of God being manifest uh, through exercising these spiritual gifts that God has given to His people. So what are these spiritual gifts? Verses 8 through 10 uh, really outlines for us uh, some of these spiritual gifts. Uh, they're not a complete uh, chart and outline, but we want to go through, uh, through them one by one to see uh, and appreciate the diversity God has given to His people. So verse 8 talks about first message of wisdom. A uh, message of wisdom comes from the true wisdom. The theme of the first Corinthians is that the true wisdom is the, the message of the cross. 
So if you have the message of the wisdom, you're able to really uh, clearly, with clarity, share about how the cross uh, really reveals uh, the, the will of God, how God has revealed himself through the cross, through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ. And also the second gift mentioned there is a message of knowledge. It's being able to, some people are able to just theologically give a rationale or explanation into a situation. Uh, they, they're able to bring a God-centered explanation into a, into a situation. So that's the message of the knowledge. And the third, we have the faith. And it's not talking about saving faith because everyone has the gift of saving faith, but it's talking about an extraordinary confidence and trust for a specific outcome in a specific situation. So these are the type of people who just believe. They just, they just know and they're just, they're just confident. They bring an air of positivity and assurance uh, to the community because they're extraordinary confidence and faith. Next, we have gifts of healing. So some people are gifted in the sense that when they pray for uh, healing, uh, God will actually grant uh, you know, healing from various illnesses and sicknesses. Next, we have mirac miraculous powers. So some people are gifted in the sense that they're able to drive out dem uh, demons and really overcome uh, people from their bondages. Uh, they're able to pray for people and God does supernatural things. Uh, those are the miraculous power. Next, we have gift of prophecy. And prophecy is uh, being able to spontaneously uh, receive and give, uh, communicate the revelation that God gives to your uh, mind. And many sense, in, in, the, in the sense of applying the truth of the gospel into a specific situation. So they're able to speak not, not just the words of God, but really a revelation that is encouraging, affirming uh, for other people in the community. Next, we have the distinguishing between spirits. Uh, is, this, is this ability to discern the authenticity of the prophetic message, and they're able to distinguish very clearly from a false message, uh, from a true uh, prof prophetic words. Next, we have different kinds of tongues. Uh, it's this supernatural gift of speaking in unlearned uh, human language. And so they're able, they're able to pray and they're able to speak in words that are that, uh, language that they never learned before. Uh, next, lastly, we have the interpretation of tongues. And these are the people who are able to translate an, a spoken, unlearned language. Nobody else would understand what's being spoken, but uh, these people have the rare, unique ability to translate and to in interpret uh, what's being spoken. And the point is this. The point is, if you're able to speak from your heart and confess from your heart that Jesus is Lord, that means Paul is affirming that you have the Holy Spirit and He desires and He's already giving out these gifts uh, and talents to serve other people. The point and uh, the agenda for your spiritual gifts is not to serve yourself and to, is to take you to a higher depths in your relationship with God. It's not for your own personal benefit, but it's the common good. And the question for you is this, in what ways are you benefiting others in your communities uh, through the exercise of your gifts and talents? In what ways are you contributing to the overall common good of your community? Is God calling you to contribute and serve with your talents and abilities and your gifts uh, for the benefit of other people in your life? Because if you think about it, the one who possess all these gifts that I just mentioned right now is none other than Jesus Christ. He possessed all these gifts that I just mentioned, and yet he did not leverage these gifts for his own good, but he gave it up uh, to leverage these gifts for the good and the, for the benefit of other people. So all the more we should leverage our gifts and talents to serve other people in our community. There's a story by J.R.R. Tolkien who wrote a story called Smith of the Wooden Major. It talks about this Smith Smithson who receives a rare gift of a silver star. So when he puts this silver star on his head, he's able to fly to these magical places and he possesses special powers and privileges. And uh, one time this king comes to him and asks, do you think, Smith, that it's time for you to give up this thing? And to that, Smith replies, What's that to you, king? Why, why should I do so? Isn't it mine, these gifts of mine? It came to me, and may a man not keep things that come to him, at least as a remembrance? And to that, king replies, 
Sometimes, uh, some things, there are free gifts and they're given for remembrance, but other gifts are not so given. They cannot belong to a man forever, nor be treasured as heirlooms. They are lent. You have not thought perhaps that someone else might need this thing, but it is so. Time is pressing. The story tells us that the gifts that God has bestowed upon us is not for our own good, but for, for the good of other people. So what are those gifts that you can really leverage for the service of others? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit living in us and uh, bestowing upon us the gifts, the spiritual gifts, for the good of the community, the church community. So help us to leverage what you have given us for the good of other people in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is a part of the program.